I titled it Dreams of Our Childhood. When you were a Do you ever dream when asleep at night that you were a child again? That you run barefoot through the soft hummus dirt along the fields of grain? That's what we're doing now. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever walk through the meadow grass and pick wildflowers there? A handful of yellow buttercups or fuzzy cat ears to pair? Then do you come to the river's edge, and though it's only a dream, you find a stone that's flat and clean and watch it skip the stream. But then do you wake at break of day to find the dreams are gone, and you are once again encased in these so cordial bones. Oh, won't it be grand when we awake in our father's house above? With bones that don't ache and knees that don't quake, surrounded by his love. Nice. Thank you. Very nice. This was written by Norma, Aunt Norma Sage Matson. Speaking in, right up. In 1961, and it says, uh, The Old Pine Tree. Something important happened today in Table Rock. A living giant, nearly 200 years old, was felled. You see, they cut down the old pine tree, which had stood for longer than anyone could remember. And when something that has lived that long is cut down, you have to pay mind to it. Some of us thought maybe it had stood for a thousand years, and as long as it stood, that was the old tree's secret. You could almost believe it. The old pine was huge, ten feet around. It was tall, too, over 900 feet. And it had been taller, but it had lost... 90 feet. Over 90 feet. <laughs> 900, Mike. Yeah, um, that would have, that would have been a miracle. <laughs> Over 90 feet, and it had been taller, but it had lost its top in a storm years before. The tree had a majesty about it, though, like it would stand forever, and the birds had roosted in it so long that now, now that it's gone, I'll bet they fly to that spot and start to sit down on a limb. Some months ago, the needles began to turn brown at the top, giving warning that all was not well within. We all worried about it as the brown needles began to show up more and more. Finally, we had to admit that the pine was dying. Emmett made arrangements to have it felled, and I guess he felt like he was pronouncing a death sentence. Then came today, and we watched out the kitchen window. The bark had been removed in a large strip where the, old, where the saw would cut, and it seemed like a terrible indignity for the tree to be bared like that, as if it were a patient prepared for surgery. Now the power saw was at work, making the first bite. It was the, it was the whine of the saw, of course, but it sounded for all the world as if the pine was groaning, suffering, protesting against this outrage. But the saw kept on and there was no stopping now. The whole thing didn't take long, a little over half an hour. We didn't dare leave the window because we, we couldn't miss its fall. It began to go and it made us catch our breath. Nobody yelled timber when it crashed, smashing into the soft pumice earth. It was like a broken body with many of its limbs off. And now it didn't look so big, so majestic, so dignified. Now it was a log and a set of statistics. We could count its rings and measure its length and say how many board feet of lumber it ought to make. And just look at this rotten place inside. You might say now, it's like the soul of the tree is gone. It was a thing that had to be done, but you don't like it. And you know how your eyes are going to miss that silhouette against the eastern sky. And even after they haul it away in pieces, we'll miss it for a good time to come. The old pine tree was felled on March 6, 1961. Mm -hmm. And Norma, that